Hello everybody, after a vote by my Patreon supporters, we're going to cover a topic that a lot of people have wanted me to cover for a very long time, and that's creating rope swings, okay? So I've got this little setup for a platformer here where I can click just about anywhere and uh, grapple onto that area of space, and it gives us a kind of worms-like uh, rope that we can kind of swing with. I can kind of influence it left and right by sort of swinging in that direction. If I don't swing at all, it just acts like a kind of regular pendulum and sort of eventually brings us to a halt here. I can climb up, down the rope. Uh, if we go fast enough, uh, we go all the way over the top as well. The source code for this will be available in the description for my Patreon supporters and anyone willing to drop a few dollars to get instant access to that. Or you can just watch this video and I'm going to show you how to write all the code anyway. So to get the most out of this video, there's going to be a couple of things you'll want to have a reasonable grasp on beforehand, okay? And that's, first of all, just being able to make a platformer in the first place. This is all very simple. Uh, and the other thing you want to know about is state machines at a very, very basic level. What I mean by a very basic level is literally for the player, we have a regular state, which is him moving around and jumping and all that kind of nonsense. And uh, we use a switch statement, and as code you can see here, a switch statement based on the state to determine whether or not to use the regular normal state code for running around and jumping, or whether to use uh, our swinging code, okay? And just being able to split our code into these two cases, um, that's all you really need to understand. If you don't know anything about this, um, I do have a really good video on state machines that you can go watch, I'll be in the description as well. So this is what our platformer looks like now. It's all very straightforward. Just clicking anyway doesn't doesn't actually do anything yet. We can just move around and jump. We've got a little bit of preservation of momentum because we're doing acceleration and friction and stuff that changes based on whether or not we're in the air or in the ground um, rather than just setting our speeds, okay? So before we get started, let's just take a look at the basic setup. This is my player's step event. At the top here, we've got our input gathering. And uh, in here, this might look a little bit different to you, but it's just the same section um, as before where we work out what our horizontal speed and vertical speed should be based on our input. So whether we should be walking left or right or jumping. It's a little bit different because it uses acceleration. So we're accelerating H speed and V speed by given amounts rather than just setting H speed as we were before by saying if it's left, walk four pixels left. If it's right, walk four pixels right. Um, we're actually accelerating by a small amount, which isn't very different, but it is marginally different to look at if you're not used to it. Okay, and the other difference is that it's in a state machine. So we've got a switch here for a variable called state. Uh, and that state can be one of two things from an enum set in here. It can be pState.normal or pState.swing. And in our normal state, this is where we do all our running and jumping stuff. So that's the only code that happens normally. And then when we're in our swing state, we'll have some code in here. And that's going to handle all of our actual rope swinging fun physicsy nonsense. Okay. And then under that uh, switch statement. So after that switch statement is finished, we do our classic um, fraction handling and uh, collision code down here. And that's all exactly the same as it usually is. Okay. So that's our basic setup. Okay, so that's our setup. Let's now go over how we're actually going to do this rope swing. In our normal state, what we're going to do is at the bottom, we're going to check to see if we've clicked the mouse somewhere. Okay, so a simple check on the mouse button. And then if we have, we'll change our state from being pState.normal uh, to pState.swing. And then when we do that, we're also going to store the position of wherever we clicked and determine the angle and length of the rope, which will be the angle and distance uh, from the point where we've clicked to the player, okay? That line is all gonna work out. This is obviously just the quickest setup for this as well. Um, how you want your grappling hooks to actually work in your own game is going to be very specific to you, whether or not you want to like shoot out a projectile that grabs onto walls, I have only certain spots you can grapple onto, uh, whether you want it to instantly latch on or not, that's all gonna be up to you. That's up to you and your game. Uh, I'm just here to show you the finger quotes physics of the pendulum more than anything else. So let's set up uh, this stuff in the, the normal state real quick and then we can actually get on to talking about the swing itself which is the actual exciting part. So in this case statement for normal, uh, in our normal state, uh, just at the bottom here after we've calculated all of our assorted movement from moving left and right and jumping, I'm going to type if mouse check button pressed and the left. I'm going to make this a bit bigger just so that we can all definitely see what's going on in the video. There we go. Uh, maybe a couple more. There we go. 
we'll need to be sure. So if we've pressed the left mouse button, I'm going to get the X coordinates of where we clicked. So I'm going to create a variable called grapple X equals mouse X. Grapple Y equals mouse Y. Rope X equals X. Rope Y equal Y. So rope X and rope Y are going to be essentially our X and Y position um, for it, but just the end of the rope, the end that the player is on, which is obviously when we first shoot it, going to be just exactly where the player is. Okay. Um, a couple more things we need to declare here. So rope angle velocity. That's going to be how quickly the angle of our sort of pendulum circle um, is, uh, how quickly we're swinging basically <laughs> is going to be zero. Um, you can decide for yourself if you want to carry across some momentum from what you already have and how exactly you want to do that. Um, uh, that'll take some messing around, um, but I'll, I'll leave that one for you guys to work out. Um, rope angle is going to equal point direction, uh, grapple x, grapple y, x, y. Okay, so that's going to be the angle from wherever we are to wherever we clicked. And then we also want to work out the distance. So we can do rope, uh, rope length equals point underscore distance. Again, grapple x, grapple y, x, y, semicolon. And state, of course, to equal p, state dot swing. Okay, that's just a simple enum I set up in the create event here, p state, normal, and swing, um, so that we can just easily distinguish between our two states. You could just use naught and one as well. If you don't know how enums work, you could just write state equal one, put one here for your case and zero here for that case, but enums are pretty easy. So <laughs> um, that's why I've decided to use those. So uh, once we've done that, that's worked out everything we need in the actual uh, normal state, because once we click somewhere, we worked out all the stuff we need to do with our rope. And uh, then we sent us to the swing state. So on the next step, we're going to follow what code is in here and skip all of this code, okay? Okay, so now that we're actually in our swing state, what do we do? This is theoretically the hard part, right? While there is maths out there for calculating like pendulums, uh, lots of uh, formulas for that kind of thing, they're not all that practical or necessary for what we really want to achieve. We can actually achieve uh, what we want in a game context um, with some really simple stuff that doesn't really have any physics to it at all. Okay, um, we're just going to boil this problem down to its most basic components. Like, how should a swinging pendulum behave? Visually, what do you notice about a pendulum? First of all, they move in a circle, right, because they're limited to the length of the rope itself. And they ex seem to accelerate fastest when the rope is at a right angle with gravity and slowest when it's parallel with gravity. Okay, that's why I like it. Like it speeds up there and it like slows down as it gets into the middle, it slows down when it's at the top, speeds up when it's at the sides. Okay, that's how uh, pendulums appear to behave. So we can use that fact alone on how we observe pendulums just to be to create something that behaves closely enough to a real pendulum for pretty much any game context. Okay, um, and we can do all of that with just one line of code. It's really cool. And that line is var rope angle acceleration equals uh, negative 0.2, it's a bit of a magic number, we'll come back to that, multiplied by d cos open bracket rope angle close bracket semicolon. And that's it. Okay, that's the whole line. So what does this line do? Uh, rope acceleration is going to be the variable in which we store how quickly our player is accelerating um, along the angles of the circle that we know exists because we're a pendulum, right? Based on the, the length of the rope at any given time. So how do we work out what that uh, angle acceleration should be? Well, what I'm gonna do is just use cosine. Um, D cos as opposed to cos um, just means that we're working in degrees rather than radians, okay? It doesn't change anything about the actual calculation itself. Um, and cosine, uh, if you might remember from some of my other videos, if you watch some of my other stuff, or you might know in general, 
um, is very similar to sine, okay? Um, and what these things do is they're from trigonometry and maths, um, and all you really need to know, in case you're worried that we're gonna go into some mathsy stuff you don't understand, is that cosine looks like this, okay? You put a number into cosine, and it brings you back a number between one and minus one. And along here, you can see what numbers those are that go into it. This is assuming we're working with degrees, which we are, we're using d cos to work with degrees. You can also just, regular cos uses radians, which is a different thing, and you don't need to worry about. But you can see at zero, uh, cosine returns one. And you can see it bounces as we go up in numbers between one and minus one. Okay, and then back to one again, and back to minus one, and so on. Now what's important is cosine just happens to be uh, the perfect arrangement for what we want to achieve. We want to accelerate fastest um, when we are at right angles uh, with our pendulum uh, center and accelerate slowest when we are uh, vertical, when we're parallel with gravity. Now if you know how a circle in game maker or game development works or how degrees and angles in game development work, uh, they start at zero degrees, is the um, is, is facing to the right, everything might have is facing to the right, and then as we go up in degrees all the way to 90, 90 is facing up, 180 is left, 270 is down, and then 360 and zero are both you know, facing right again, okay? Now bearing that in mind, uh, what we want to do when we are at zero degrees is essentially go backwards, we want to apply negative numbers, okay, and count downwards, um, in order to accelerate uh, uh, in, the, in the correct direction of motion that we want. Uh, and when we are facing to the left, however, we want to increase our angle, okay? We want to um, go from 180 upwards towards 270, okay? So we want to always be accelerating downwards. Luckily, cosine lets us do exactly this, because when we are at zero degrees, uh, we get a one. Okay, when we put zero degrees into cosine, we get a one back. And when we put um, 180 degrees into cosine, we get a negative one back. Now you might be thinking, wait, that's the opposite of what you just said. You wanted negative to start, right? Well, that's why in our line of code in Game Maker, uh, we simply multiply it by a negative number, but I'll come back to that negative number and why it's 0.2 rather than one in a little bit. But if you just think about this for a second, that means at zero degrees, when we're facing to the right, we've got a number, uh, we've got one uh, from cosine that we multiply by a negative number, so we get negative 0.2 as our acceleration, so that's what we want, heading down towards, back towards 270, or negative 90 rather, I guess, since we're going that way. Um, and then when we are uh, all the way the other side, when we're at 180 degrees, uh, we're going to get minus 1, minus 1 times minus 0 0.2 is going to give us 0.02, again, accelerating us towards 270, which is what we want. And then importantly, which was what gives us our pendulum feel, when we're at 90 degrees, which is straight up, or 270, which is straight down, we have an acceleration of 0, so our velocity is not going to change at all, okay? Um, which is what we want. And then we, if you add a little bit of dampening on top of that, it means we actually slow down at those points as well, and it's great. Okay, um, that's it. That's why just this, this simple graph and this very simple function will get us exactly what we need uh, from our pendulum in terms of its behavior, okay? Just that one and that minus one popping back and forth between them and importantly at the correct angles in the middle being at zero is just exactly what we want. So I've chosen 0 0.2 here. As long as it's a negative number, you can use whatever you want here. Um, it's a complete magic number that I've used. You might want to put something in instead, like um, rope acceleration rate or something like that, put in an actual variable. Um, I'm just keeping all the numbers here so you can see very clearly, for the sake of the tutorial, how everything works, okay? I do that a lot, but I feel the need to explain it every time I do it, because it's important, because magic numbers are not a good habit. So do replace this with a variable if you want to, to use this stuff. So now that we know our acceleration should be, we just kind of need to apply it, and that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to type rope angle velocity, so that's going to be our actual speed as a result of this acceleration, plus equals uh, rope angle acceleration. 
Okay, so we know our rope angle velocity is starting off at zero, and we're going to add whatever this is to it. So we're going to get faster and faster and faster when we are at the right and when we're at the left, and uh, we're not going to get faster when we're at the bottom or the top. Okay. So we gain the most speed the quickest when we are at those positions and we don't gain speed when we're top and bottom as we should. So rope angle plus equal rope angle velocity. Okay, so we take that velocity and we just add it to our angle. So our angle along this circle increases. Uh, and then rope angle velocity multiply by equal or asterisk equal. Uh, 0.99. This is just a dampener so that when we are at the bottom and when we are at the top or, or if we're actually just at any point in the circle, uh, we slowly reduce our velocity which will allow us to actually swing and slowly kind of come to a stop as well if we're not applying any other forces. Okay. Uh, which is just to represent air friction, right? And just to, to make that feel right. You might not even want it, depending on your game. You might not want any dampening, which case just just take that line out. You know, you don't you don't necessarily need it for this. Okay. Um, so that's our rope angle increase, but obviously this is just a number that's changing. We're not actually positioning our player anywhere. So that's how how are we going to do that? How do we move in a circle? Well, hopefully you've maybe if you've seen some of my stuff before, we're going to use our good old buddy length to x and length to y. The absolute easiest way to position something in a circle if you know the distance from that circle, which we do, we know the rope length, and we know the angle, which is literally this. Okay, so rope x is uh, our x coordinate at the end of the rope. It's going to equal grapple x, uh, which is our x coordinate where we've grappled to, plus length the underscore x, make sure you wrote x, not y, um, rope length as the distance, and rope angle as the direction. Okay, simple as that. And then rope y equal grapple y plus length the underscore y, make sure you write y there. It's very easy, I make the mistake all the time, is to write length the like x twice, and then that's kind of like make sure you've written y there. Very easy mistake to make. Rope, length, rope, angle. Again, okay, and then that does the same thing for the y coordinate. Okay, so now we know where the end of the rope should be. We can set our player speed accordingly. So h speed equal rope x minus x. The reason we're doing this rather than just setting our coordinate is so that we can make use of our collision code afterwards. Okay, just the same as before. And v speed equals rope y minus y. So that's finding the, dif the difference between where the end of the rope should, uh, should be and where we are currently. And that's just setting our speed to be that, all right? And then all we need after doing all this is a way to leave the swing state. So I'm going to say if uh, key jump or whatever variable you stored, pressing the jump key in state equal p state dot normal uh, v speed fraction equals zero v speed equal negative jump speed. So the last thing we want to do is come down to the collision section. So this is my classic collision code, just a while statement, moving us as close to the wall as possible and then stopping. Um, what we want to do is if we are in the swing state and we find a collision in either the horizontal or vertical, um, so if state equals p state dot swing. So you know if we're in the middle of a swing, we found a horizontal collision here. I want to make sure that the rope doesn't go on without us because the rope is being calculated every step uh, in here. Um, so I want to make sure we collide properly. After colliding, we set the rope angle to just be wherever we currently are. So I'm going to type rope angle equals point direction grapple x uh, grapple y x y and then i'm going to just set our speed to be zero so rope angle velocity equals zero you might have some fun experimenting with this like try setting it to just negative whatever it was um so just rope angle velocity equals negative rope angle velocity i haven't tried that i don't know what it would look like but i imagine that might give you like a bounce or something coming off the wall Play around with it and see what, see what happens. But anyway, uh, once you've written that in there, you want to copy the section. You want to also put it in the oh, vertical collision section. Um, 
I don't like duplicating code, but it was the only way I could immediately think to solve that problem. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you change it, you have to sort of change it across both, and that's why doing that sort of stuff isn't great. But um, that will work nonetheless, okay? So once you've got that in both of those, that's everything we need to do in terms of actually calculating positions. The last thing I wanna do is go to the draw event, okay? If you don't already have one, just right click in the code, go to add open event, draw, draw, okay? And make a draw event. Uh, make sure you've got draw self in here. You'll need that obviously to make sure the player continues to render themselves once we've added a draw step. But the other thing I want to add in here is First of all, check to see if we're in the uh, swing state. So if state equal p state dot swing, uh, draw line width, uh, grapple, x grapple, y rope, x rope, y, and a width of two, okay? Just gonna draw a little line from our player to wherever they've grappled. You can do that however you want, but that's just the simplest, okay? And that really is all there is to it. If I'm not forgetting anything, so I'm going to run the game now and hope for the best. <laughs> so I'm going to click somewhere, and here we go. We've got our grappling hook. Okay, there's one more thing we want to add to this, and that's our ability to manipulate this ourselves, because at the moment it's just automatically calculating uh, the swing. I think the dampening should make it so it eventually yeah, comes to kind of a halt like that. Um, and you can see how the acceleration is working as well. Like it accelerates most when we're at the edges and the least when we're sort of near the bottom. Okay, so big acceleration and then it slows down and then goes the other way and it's slowly pulled the other way as well because the acceleration slowly increases in the other direction as we swing across. Okay, so it behaves like you would expect a pendulum to. Okay, so last couple of things. Let's go into the step event back up to the swing state. Okay, so just after we've worked out where our rope angle acceleration should be, um, I'm going to type rope angle acceleration plus equal uh, key right minus key left uh, multiplied by 0 0.08. Okay, uh, it's a very big value for this, and you'll see it has a pretty pronounced impact in a second, just so you can definitely see it working. Um, again, this is just the exact same logic we use to move left and right um, in the platformer, right? That's how we work out which way we're moving. Key right minus key left, and multiplied by a speed number of some kind. You might want to call this a uh, rope manual acceleration rate or something, you know, whatever variable name you want to put in there. Okay, and, and then you can play with that to make it more or less as you desire. And then the only other thing is rope length plus equal uh, underscore key down minus underscore key up uh, times two. Okay, and that's the exact same thing again um, as left and right just enabling us to pull uh, reduce the length or increase the length of the rope at any given time. You might also want to add something like rope length equals um, max uh, rope length uh, 5, just to ensure that it has a minimum length, okay, so it'll return whichever is bigger out of 5 or whatever rope length should be, uh, just so you never end up with um, like, like going into negative rope <laughs> or whatever, right? Um, actually, I suppose I should technically make that zero because at the moment you can click anywhere. If you clicked within five, I guess that might cause weird issues. Um, but there we go. Uh, so if I run that, what we should find now is I can actually manipulate the length of the rope like that. And I can also start to actually swing as if I were on a swing uh, in any given direction and go, or if we get enough, we can go over the top like that, which is pretty cool. I think, and if we're not doing anything at all, it'll dampen and slowly bring us back. As I say, it's a pretty extreme value. Like if I just hold right, we can find eventually, even when it like dampens all the way down, we're like, like holding ourselves right. But you can, you can put, make it however you want it to be. Okay, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, as I say, I'm not going to go into like uh, like doing the sprite or whatever and things like that. You can work out how you want things to be for. A, your own specific game, um, how you change sprites with state machines is all fairly straightforward. You know, you should hopefully know how to do that kind of thing by yourself. 
Um, I hope you found this uh, one useful. I, it took a lot of research to work out how exactly I wanted to teach it. I hope you liked this method or at least found it interesting and useful. Cosine is a, a hell of a drug. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty useful, pretty useful function. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know I've not been putting out a lot of stuff lately. There's been a lot of personal stuff going on in my life, but most of that's all out of the way now, so hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more stuff from me in the very near future. Thank you, as always, to my Patreon supporters for supporting the work that I do. I couldn't make any of it without them. Thank you in particular, and in no particular order, to Mark Lintz, Dan, Mike Blankier, Thomas Van Den Eind, Run, Turtle Time, Valp, Cody Hodkinson, Louis R. Pereira, Zephyr Flame, Roven Darlin, Robert Churches, TJ, James Grumley, Patrick Guffey, Michael Ward, Matt Cote, Zinan May, Seanathan, Nick Slabish, Stephen Hagen, Bowser the Dog, Harold Guidry, Jason McMillan, and Owen Morgan. Thank you all so much for your support, and thank you for watching. Thanks, guys. Catch you guys next time.